Welcome to Geographical Analysis Lecture 13, Classical Hypothesis Testing. Let's begin today's lecture with a hypothesis testing scenario, an example. In this example, a transportation planning agency is doing a financial analysis and determines that extending the light rail line to a new subdevelopment will be cost effective if each resident makes more than two trips per week on the light rail line. In a, in a feasibility study using a random sample of 100 residents, analysts found that residents take 2.1 trips per week on average, with a standard deviation of 0.374 trips. The question is, do these data provide sufficient evidence at the 99% confidence level for the analysts to conclude that the extension will be cost effective? So think about what we're saying here. The question is whether or not the residents in the neighborhood take on average at least two trips per week. They conducted a small sample of 100 residents and found that the average in those 100 residents is 2.1 trips. So why isn't this enough evidence to tell us that, yes, for sure, the average of the, uh, you know, the average number of trips per week for all the residents, the population of our study, would be at least 2. Why wouldn't it be 2.1? And the answer is that we've only taken one sample from this population, a sample of 100 people. And yes, it's true that the sample mean is suggesting that enough trips would be taken, because the sample mean is 2.1. But how do we know that this, that this sample mean isn't, for random reasons, oversampling, say, high transit users, and therefore not necessarily representative of the population mean. The truth is, is we can't know whether or not this sample is representative or not. But what we can do is look at the amount of variation in that sample to help judge whether or not the, whether or not the sample provides us with enough precision to be confident that our, uh, that our sample mean is at least 2.0 trips per week. So based on the question, we can derive the following descriptive statistics. The sample mean was 2.1. The standard deviation of the sample was 0 0.374. The sample size was 100. And based on the standard deviation and the sample size, we can compute the standard error of the mean, 0 0.0374. Based on that, we can draw the normal curve. This normal curve is the sampling distribution. And we're going to place at the center of this normal curve x bar. The standard error of the mean, remember, is, can be considered to be the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And What we are going to do is calculate the confidence interval around that sample mean to determine whether or not it's likely that the population mean is more than 2.0. So the confidence interval equation, and I'm sorry that this got cut off, so let me rewrite it, is x bar plus minus z99% times sigma times the standard error. So we have x bar is 2.1 plus or minus 2.58 is the z-score, and the standard error of the mean is 0 0.0374, which gives us 0 0.096. So the confidence interval, and I think I've got it on the next slide, this is just showing how we got the z-score. We want it to be 99% sure. We've got 100 respondents, so we're using the normal curve, and we get a z-score of 2.58. So the confidence interval goes from x bar minus uh, 0.0996 to x bar plus 0.096. So we can be 99% sure that the population mean is within this range of values.
and there's only a 0.05% chance of obtaining a mean value over here. So given our sample statistics, we conclude that there is less than a 0.5% chance that the population mean is less than 2.0. I mean, technically, it's less than 2.04, which is close enough to 2. So the analysts, based on their sample, can be fairly certain that these, the sample mean that they got 2.1 precludes the possibility that the true mean of the population is down here at less than 2.0.